Well, welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today we're checking out yet another high-end Radeon RX 6800 XT board partner card. And this time it is the XFX Speedster Merc 319 Black that's getting the Harbour Unbox treatment. And I think that's the last time I'm going to say the full product name. And instead we'll just call it the, uh, the Merc from now on. A little bit easier and you guys don't want to hear that mouthful every time I refer to the card. So, it's not going to stay up is it? Actually, I'll just I'll lay it down flat. So let's start by doing the usual, which is, I'll just pick it up again, look over the card, we'll talk about the external design and some of the features there, then we'll rip the cooler off, do a tear down, take a look uh, at the cooler and the PCB. Then of course, we will jump into some benchmarks, do some thermal testing, all that good stuff that you guys enjoy. So let's get to it. IPS is renowned for producing some of the best colours available for gaming monitors, but it's always come at a trade-off. MSI has taken their engineering to a whole new level with the introduction of a revolutionary rapid IPS panel that's backed with Quantum Dot technology. For the first time ever, the new MSI Optics MAG274QRF-QD gives you game-changing speed with unprecedented colour accuracy that our class is the best of the best that we've tested here on the channel. Revel in rich, deep, incredible colour and push your gaming to its limits with 1 millisecond greater gray response times and ultra-fast 165Hz refresh rates. If a gaming monitor could be described as coming close to perfect, this would be it. So learn more about MSI's new Optics MAG274QRF-QD monitor via the links below. The second I picked this thing up, I knew we were in for a treat, as it weighs a whopping 1,802 grams, and that's 13% heavier than Power Colors Red Devil. And it's not just the weight that's over the top, the dimensions are pretty extreme as well. It stretches 340 millimeters long, so that's 20 millimeters longer than Devil. It also stands 139 millimeters tall, and it's a rather portly 57 millimeters wide. So it's an absolute chunk, and certainly the biggest air-cooled RX 6800XT I expect to see. Now we've established that the Merc is a big boy, a fat boy even, but what about the design? Well I'd say in terms of aesthetics it is a great looking graphics card and on top of that it is well made. The fan shroud is technically plastic though it's been wrapped in aluminium giving it a very premium look and feel. Those silver highlights that you can see that's all the plastic part while the black cover is aluminium. Then embedded in the shroud are three fans all of which rotate counterclockwise. The outer two fans measure 95mm in diameter, while the centrally located fan is an 85mm model. All fans feature dual wheel bearings, so they should be quiet and offer a long run time before failure. Moving around to the top side of the card, so that's typically the outer facing edge when traditionally mounted. Here we find a raised aluminium plate with the Radeon RX 6800 XT branding, which when powered down has a sort of mirrored finish, but when powered up is LED backlit, and I've got to say it does look very cool. There's also an XFX logo, which is also backlit, though none of it is RGB lit. For the most part, the LED lighting is white, which looks good and it will suit most builds. The only issue might be the red RX part, which won't suit those who don't want red lighting in their build. So while I think it does look good, a safer bet here would have been to make everything white LED backlit. Anyway, that's the beginning end of the lighting, so no RGB here. Finally, you'll also find two 8-pin PCIe power connectors and a dual bar switch. Then, around the back side of the card, we find a very cool-looking full-size backplate with the Merc branding splashed across it in white. There's a lot of cutouts here to help with airflow, and at the end of the card, there's a big opening that allows the air to flow through the heatsink out the back side of the card. The backplate also wraps around the end of the card, creating a really cool-looking effect, and basically, this graphics card looks very impressive from any and all angles. And the last angle to explore is the I.O. end, and here we find the standard AMD reference configuration. So a single HDMI 2.1 port, two DisplayPort 1.4a outputs, and a USB Type-C port, all on a custom-made I.O. bracket with the XFX branding cut into it. So that's the Merc externally. Now it's time to pull this thing apart. Because this is such a massive, heavy graphics card, XFX has had to be careful with how they design the mounting for the cooler. So this card is a little more intricate than some of the other models we've already checked out. Basically, to take it apart, you need to remove a few screws from the back plate, then remove the main cooler, and then remove a further 11 screws from the PCB bracing in order to get the back plate off. With the card fully disassembled, we find that the cooler, fans, and fan shroud weigh in at 1,255 grams, which is actually more than a lot of 5,700 XTs weighed in total. So it is a seriously big cooler. 
The cool is made up of two banks of densely packed aluminium fins and five full-length 6mm nickel-plated copper heat pipes that move heat away from the large copper base. The copper base has been used to extract heat from not just the GPU, but also the GDDR6 memory, then cooling the VRM, both the power stages and the inductors, are two aluminium plates connected directly to the main heatsink. So this is a serious looking cooler, and it's something you'd expect to see on a high-end ROG Strix graphics card. Now, because this is a 1.2 kilogram cooler, XFX has created almost a dozen anchor points for connecting it to the graphics card. Then, to ensure that this doesn't damage the PCB or create any sag, they've included a thick aluminium brace that runs the entire length of the card and connects to the backplate using 11 screws. The aluminium backplate itself is a little thicker than normal, and XFX has really taken advantage of this thing, far more so than any of their competitors, at least for the cards that we've looked at so far. Here you'll find a series of thermal pads that are designed to remove built-up heat from behind the PCB. They're located behind the power stages, memory, and GPU, so that is great to see. Then, over on the 260mm long PCB, we find a robust VRM packing 19 power stages, along with a pair of 8-pin PCIe power connectors and a dual bar switch. Now, for the power stages, XFX is using Infineon's TDA2147-2 Optimos stages, which are rated for a 70 amp capacity, 16 of which have been used to deliver power to the GPU, 14 for the GFX, and 2 for the SoC. Then, in addition to that, there's a single phase for the GPU power, VDDCI, and two phases for the GDDR6 memory. Now, in terms of clock specifications, XFX lists a boost clock frequency of 2360MHz, which is just a 5% increase over the 2250MHz default spec set by AMD. The GDDR6 memory, on the other hand, that has been left completely stock at 16 gigabits per second. So when compared to other graphics cards that we've already looked at, in particular 6800 XTs, I'd say this overclock is very typical. So it's going to be interesting to see how much more overclocking headroom is left. But of course, that will also depend on how good the silicon quality is on my particular sample. I may or may not have won the silicon lottery, but we'll find out in a moment. So, playing shut off the Tomb Raider for 30 minutes, we saw the Merc peak at 74 degrees in a 21 degree room when installed inside the Corsair Obsidian 500D, which has been fully populated with fans. So, plenty of airflow. That's actually not a particularly impressive result. At least, it's not if you ignore the fan speed of just 1200 RPM, which saw the card generate just 34 decibels of noise, making it extremely quiet. We're talking whisper quiet here. Also, the typical core clock speed seen during our testing was 2350 MHz, and that saw the power consumption of just the graphics card hit 319 watts, so a 7% increase over the AMD reference model. Now, for overclocking, with the limits reached, we saw a peak operating temperature of 75 degrees, but this time the fans spun up to 1300 RPM, though even here they were extremely quiet and we couldn't hear them over the case fans. The overclock saw the cores operate at 2560 MHz on average, and the memory also hit 17.2 gigabits per second, which is the current limit that AMD will allow you to overclock to. Then finally, when overclocked, the card sucked down 345 watts, so a 7% increase from the factory OC configuration. Okay, let's move into the benchmark graphs. As usual, we'll be testing with our AMD Ryzen 9 3950X GPU test rig with 32GB of DDR4 3200CL14 memory in a dual channel, dual rank configuration. The latest drivers available at the time of testing have been used, and for this one we have just a single game to look at. Then we'll check out power consumption and temperatures. If you want to see how the RX 6800 series performs in a wide range of games, then please check out our day one review where we did test 18 games in total. Okay, with that said, let's move on to have a look at the Shadow of the Tomb Raider results. Looking at out of the box performance, we see that the Merc is comparable to the Nitro Plus from Sapphire, both delivered 156 FPS on average. Now, the overclocking performance wasn't amazing, again, only matching the 2560MHz overclock achieved by the Nitro Plus, while the Red Devil hit 2.7GHz and the ASUS Strix OCLC reached 2.8GHz, which is the current limit enforced by AMD. Frankly, given the PCB design and the quality cooler featured on the Merc, I feel like this graphics card should be able to match the Red Devil, and the same really also applies to the Nitro Plus. So this is why I always say take overclocking results with a grain of salt, as they can vary quite a bit depending on silicon quality. That being the case, this is almost certainly not a great showing for the XFX Merc. Then at 4K, we're again looking at identical performance to that of the Sapphire Nitro Plus, both stock and overclocked. 
When compared to the AMD reference spec, the Merc is 5% faster and then 10% faster once overclocked. So again, pretty typical OC gains there. Also, as I've said, be aware that your OC mileage will vary and it is possible that some Mercs will match what we've seen here from the Red Devil. It's also possible that some Red Devils won't overclock as well as mine and may overclock even worse than what we're seeing here from the Merc. So again, Silicon Lottery, it just depends on how lucky you are. Now, here's a quick look at power consumption for just the graphics card, measuring from both the 8-pin PCIe power inputs as well as the PCIe slot. The Merc used the same amount of power as the Red Devil and Asus Strix OCLC, and then went overclocked slightly more than the stock Nitro Plus. And again, basically the same level of power as the Asus Strix OCLC. Okay, so finally, here's how the Merc compares to the other 6800 XTs that we've tested so far. And first up, we're looking at stock out of the box performance. The Merc stock performance is exceptional, running nine degrees cooler than the AMD reference card while maintaining a much lower fan speed. It was also six degrees cooler than the Red Devil, again, while operating its fans at a lower, quieter speed. The GDDR6 memory temperatures were also very good at 68 degrees, comparable to that of the Nitro Plus. Then we have the VRM temperature, which peaked at 74 degrees, which is a bit hotter than most other AIB models tested, but certainly not concerning. And again, very good given the extremely low fan speed. Now, with the operating volume normalized to 40 decibels across the tested models, we see just how good the XFX Merc is. For the GPU die, we're looking at about a 10 degree reduction in temperature when compared to the power color Red Devil and 11 degrees better than the Nitro Plus. The GDDR6 memory temps were also on par with the Red Devil, as were the VRM temperatures, so overall an exceptionally good result that makes the Merc the best air-cooled 6800 XT that we've come across yet. Well, I've got to say, I didn't really know what to expect from the uh, Speedster Merc 319 Black. The card certainly looks good, and it's, well, it's certainly very big and heavy as well, but I didn't expect it to blow away the competition quite like it has. XFX has clearly committed themselves to producing the best air-cooled 6800 XT possible, and the Merc is without question the best quality XFX graphics card that I've ever tested. It also happens to be the best air-cooled 6800 XT that we've tested so far. It is a shame that the silicon quality wasn't better, but I'm sure with the right GPU, the Merc could easily match the overclock scene with the Red Devil. But as I've already said numerous times now, overclocking really is a luck of the draw type thing, which is why it's commonly referred to as the silicon lottery. Still, even if you don't win the silicon lottery, the fact that you're guaranteed to receive a cool and quiet graphics card is enough for me to recommend the Merc to anyone looking at buying a 6800 XT. On that note, the price is, um, well, let's be honest, it's pretty horrible right now. Though this isn't just an issue that XFX are facing alone, rather it's a problem with all current AIB 6800 XTs. As I'm sure you're aware, AMD set the MSRP at $650 US, and typically that would mean high quality, really big graphics cards like what we see here with the Merc, they would usually set you back around $50 US over MSRP, so in this case, $700 US. Unfortunately, the Red Devil and Merc are priced well over AMD's MSRP at $800 US. So not $50, $150 over the MSRP. And frankly, that is just too much to be paying for a 6800 XT. Now, I don't expect the card to remain at this higher price forever, but that's just where it is for now. And it will likely remain there for, I'd say the next two to three months. Anyway, should pricing become more reasonable, then I think the Merc will be one of those models that you should be on the lookout for, as it really is one of the best air-cooled uh, high-end 6800 XTs. And with that, let me know what you think about the new XFX graphics card in the comment section below. Also, if you liked this video, please give it one of those. Subscribe for more content because we do have more 6800 XTs that we'll be looking at. We have some more 6800 cards. There's some more NVIDIA graphics cards coming up. There's some big benchmark videos coming up. And of course, Tim does some stuff from time to time. So yeah, there'll be some content from him. Also, if you'd like to join the Harbour Unbox community, uh, Patreon and Floatplane accounts are linked in the video description. So you can check those out. If you're interested, you'll get access to our monthly live stream where Tim and I get together do that, talk with you guys about whatever's going on, address your questions. We also have a Discord chat where we can do that daily, so Tim and I are often in there chatting with you guys. Behind the scenes videos, Q&As, it's very cool. If you're interested, the links for that stuff is in the video description. If not, perfectly fine, and I would like to just thank you for watching this video of uh, this really big XFX graphics card. Hope you enjoyed it. I'm your host, Steve. I'll see you again next time.